We spend our lives caught between two contradictory truths. The first is that the unexamined life is not worth living. And the other is that ignorance is bliss. It's our ability to take on the realities that confront us with imagination and reason that allow us to make this existence better through solving problems, correcting injustice, making art. Yet at the same time, I think that if we spent our days truly immersed in every evil, injustice, and imperfection that exists in our world, we would be overwhelmed with the enormity of it the enormity of the intractable obstacles, injustices, and misfortunes we cannot make better. We would spend much of our lives like the poor ghosts in a Christmas carol, wanting to make better the things on earth that they did not make better in life and forever doomed to witness the suffering. This is the great mystery and reality of our world. And I think this is what the American Presbyterian minister Frederick Beekner meant when he wrote, here is the world, beautiful and terrible things will happen. Do not be afraid. As Unitarian Universalists, our primary very first source of spiritual inspiration is the experience human beings have of the transcending mystery and wonder affirmed in all cultures which moves us to a renewal of the spirit and an openness to the forces which create and uphold life. It's inside this mystery and wonder where faith is born. One of my favorite explanations of transcending mystery and wonder affirmed around the world is from Albert Einstein's reflection in this morning's reading, that the most miraculous thing we can encounter is the mysterious, the most magical experience of being human is being held wrapped in awe. My other favorite description of the transcending mystery and wonder comes from Trudy the Bag Lady. She's the homeless character in Lily Tomlin's mid-1980s one-woman Broadway show, The Search for Intelligent Life in the Universe. Trudy the Bag Lady walks around New York City, and one of the things she does is she speaks with beings only she can see, who she calls the space people. These are aliens for whom she serves as the guide to planet Earth. The space people have a term, translated from alien, I suppose, into Latin by Trudy the Bag Lady, that describes transcending mystery and wonder. They call it awe infinitum. In the show, Trudy the Bag Lady says, we stopped to look at the stars, and as usual, I felt in awe. And then I felt even deeper in awe at this capacity we have to be in awe about something. Then I became even more awestruck at the thought that I was, in some small way, a part of that which I was in awe about. And this feeling went on. My space chums got a word for it, awe infinitum. Because at the moment you are most in awe of all you don't understand, you're closer to understanding it at all than at any other time. And I felt so good inside. My heart felt so full, I decided to set time aside each day to do aerobics. Aerobics. Shouldn't we all do aerobics regularly, like going to the gym or for our daily walk? How can transcending mystery and wonder not make you want to work awe infinitum and aerobics into every one of your days? This season of the year, hold so many opportunities to be held wrapped in awe by the great mystery, to do our aerobics. Enter into them. Be amazed of the power of one human life, the potential in each child that's born to save the world. Lose yourself in the majesty of the solstice and how the sun seems to stand still in the sky Let yourself wonder at how just a little bit of an essential resource 
can somehow be stretched to the limit and turn out to be enough? Can you feel the amazement, the majesty, the joy, the wonder, the awe? Even though transcending mystery and wonder, the awe infinitum, is our very first and foundational spiritual source of inspiration, I think it's one many unfortunate Unitarian Universalists don't fully engage or even run away from. And I think many of us avoid deep engagement with our first principle because it gets full-fledged into the realm of emotion and things we feel and know to be true but can't explain or prove. Awe infinitum, our first source, can require a suspension of disbelief. It can require extreme humility. And it can require the admission that there is still so much we don't know. It requires removing ourselves from the center of the universe. It requires giving importance to things we can't scientifically prove or things we sometimes can't even articulate. I am a big believer in human reason and science, but I think the reality is we are not reasonable creatures. When all is taken together as a whole, we are at best multifaceted, where our reason mingles with our emotion and the ineffable human spirit and all of it is mixed into our embodiment as physical beings. <clears throat> the American writer Pico Iyer says, the opposite of knowledge isn't always ignorance. It can be wonder or mystery or possibility. And in my life, I found it's the things I don't know that have lifted me up and pushed me forward much more than the things I do know. I think Trudy the bag lady would agree. This time of year is so full of wrestling matches between knowledge and wonder, mystery and possibility, fact and awe infinitum. The arena, the wrestling mat, the boxing ring, where this tussle between reason and awe infinitum takes place is the place where art and song and poetry are born. Our job is to realize that the transcending mystery and wonder is the stuff of symbolism and allegory and poetic license because there is no way to write an expository essay outlining the experimentation results for awe. This is the best I could do, what you're getting right here this morning. The Hanukkah story asked us to remember how God made a miracle and made one night's worth of oil for the temple lamps last eight nights. Knowledge and reason asks us to prove there is a God, first of all, and begs us to demonstrate that physical laws do not let one night of oil last eight nights. If you're stuck there on the knowledge part, you're missing the transcending mystery and wonder part. The Hanukkah story is one of a mighty militaristic empire, the Seleucid Greeks, destroying the holy temple of the Jewish people and in deliberate violation of their face ban on images, set up a statue of the local king, Antiochus Epiphanes, in the temple. Hanukkah is the story of how a small band of rebels defeated this power and took back the temple. Hanukkah is the story of having hope believing light defeats darkness and good evil. The Christmas story asks us to believe how a virgin impregnated by a Holy Spirit gave birth to the only Son of God and how angels then appeared in the sky to a bunch of shepherds and foreign kings journeyed from the east following a star in the night to bow down to the baby and bring it presents. Knowledge and reason beg us to understand that virgins don't give birth and that starlight, even from a supernova and using Google Maps, cannot pinpoint you to a specific manger in a specific town in the Middle East. And then knowledge brings up the God thing again and wants you to prove the existence of God and, well, you know, angels. 
And if you're stuck on this part of the story, you miss the awe infinitum in the transcending mystery and wonder. The transcending mystery and wonder tells us the Christmas story is about how important one human life can be, how what is divine in the world comes to the poorest of the poor first. Awe infinitum tells us that the empires of wealth and military might and oppression will not have the last word that peace on earth and goodwill can be real. Even the solstice, which you think reason would be into even more than Festivus, asks us to revel in the wonder that the sun rises in the morning and gets stronger each spring and brings the dead winter earth back to life. Knowledge explains to us how the earth orbits the sun and angles of sunlight and how to predict the sun's movement in the sky with exact precision. Awe infinitum asks us to revel and feast and hang evergreens and build fires that celebrate the magic and miracle and wonder of how the sun returns and the spring returns again and again and again. Knowledge and reason deal in facts and scientific method. Transcending mystery and wonder deal in truth. Things we know are so with our heart and mind and whole being, but may not be able to prove with an equation. The amazement, majesty, and wonder depend on faith, and faith means trust. Do you trust in human potential for doing good? Do you trust in the science that backs up the adage the sun will come up in the morning and spring will return each year and the earth will come back to life? Do you trust in the reality that there are enough human and divine resources to justify having hope? Do you trust that the darknesses of the world can be overcome by light and love? Faith is not about believing in miracles that abandon common sense Faith is not about science disproving things such as virgins cannot give birth or oil lasting for eight nights instead of one, or the sun's return depending not on the gods being pleased. Faith is about trusting in the mystery and wonder of our human potential, of our best selves, of our ability to use resources wisely, and the incredible reality of the complex cosmos we live in. Trusting in these things truly does renew the spirit and get us in touch with the things that are life-giving. Hope, peace, joy, and most of all, love. I wish for you that your holidays this year are full of all these things. I'll see you Christmas Eve. It's going to be a night of transcending mystery and wonder, as it always is.